What is up, y'all? We are here for our Saturday night secret sermon. It is well after midnight, and we are here for our segment called Secret Teachings of Jesus, where we take a dive into the Gnostic Gospels, and I pick out a portion, and I read it kind of uh, right before I go on camera. And then I read it with you guys, and then I just give you the downloads live as they're coming in. And uh, the, the way this came about is because I just was like really interested in reading the, um, the Forbidden Gospels and the Gnostics and um, all of that. And I didn't know when I'd have time, and I, so I just thought that this would be a good segment for us to do together every week for fun kind of like our little book club. So I'm not a theologian. I'm just an enthusiast, uh, a mystic, and a Kabbalah student. Um, so yeah, over time, I've been doing my own studying, but also I've always just sort of been a channel of the other side. So that's where this is all coming from. Um, and so you can go on my YouTube channel, Light Love Magic, and there is an actual playlist, Secret Teachings of Jesus, where every week it has like episodes from where we've gone through um, different not, uh, gospels. Beginning um, on this channel, I started with the, uh, go the Secret Book of James, which was Jesus's brother. And that was more of like a scene-driven, like dialogue-heavy gospel that was really fun. Um, and after we finished that one, we went on to the Gospel of Philip, which has been like a very thick book. And it's basically like full of these little portions that are these like cryptic texts. And each one is its own thing. And you have to like sit there. It's like this, this cryptic text that you mull over. It's like you meditate on it. So each week we've been doing a portion of this. And for some reason, I just feel like <laughs> I have to get through the Gospel of Philip before I skip on. I might end up taking a break from Gospel of Philip and like do some other things. But for now, we're still in the Gospel of Philip. So tonight's portion is called This World, the Resurrection, and the Middle. Okay, so I'm going to read this to you poorly once or twice, and then we'll go back and we'll unpack it line for line. All right. So this world, the resurrection and the middle. A person is either in this world or in the resurrection or in the middle place. May I not be found there. In this world, there is good and evil. But the good of the world is not really good, and the evil of the world is not really evil. After this world, there is evil that is really evil. This is called the middle. The middle is death. As long as we are in this world, we should acquire resurrection so that when we take off the flesh, we may be found in rest and not wander in the middle, for many go astray on the way. Okay, so this is sort of like an after death, like what kind of happens to people? Where do they go? Um, what are the other realms and dimensions that our souls come in contact with? So let's read this again. A person is either in this world or in the resurrection or in the middle place. May I not be found there. In this world, there is good and evil, but the good of this world is not really good, and the evil of this world is not really evil. After this world, there is evil. That is, that is really evil. And this is called the middle. The middle is death. As long as we are in this world, we should acquire a resurrection so that when we take off the flesh, we may be found in rest and not wander in the middle for many go astray on the way. So uh, there is a couple of footnotes. And so we'll read those when we get there. 
So a person is either in this world or in the resurrection or in the middle place. Footnote. The middle is the region between the fullness of the divine above and this world below. So I feel like we might need chart. Let me see if I can find a chart. Okay, here we go. So a person is either in this world or in the resurrection. Ta-da! Chart. We haven't seen chart in a little while. Okay, so this here is the tree of life. This is basically the blueprint of reality. It's also the map of the Godhead, and it is a map of the human soul. The circles that you see here are the 10 dimensions of consciousness. Um, they are also the 10 dimensions of reality. And so this up here, <coughs> excuse me, Boop. this up here is Keter. This is the most abstract and concentrated, distilled, whole, unified version of the light of God. <clears throat> As this light comes into this existence, it starts to go through these filtrations and it kind of separates like when light goes through a prism and you can see the rainbow colors, right? White light, you know, broken into the spectrum shows the rainbow. So this is the Godhead. So this person is either in this world or in the resurrection. Okay, so this world, the world of earth, the world of the universe, the world of space and time and materiality, the world of even the multiverse and many universes, that is all the way down here. This is like the first expression of the purest form of God. And then this is like distilled down into like little pieces that we can digest that make him more solidified or he, she, they, um, into different aspects. And so until this light finally gets down to the manifestation of the material realm here, earth. This realm here is the astral realm. And this is where our dreams are. Um, this is sort of where souls can go traversing. This is where um, you might think of like ghosts and different spirits and entities. They, they can be there in the astral realm. So I feel like this might have to do with the middle. There's also this whole thing inverted upside down like this, and it connects to here. And so this is the supernal realm of the upper realms and the heavenly, you know, um, choirs of God and the angels and um, the highest form of consciousness. But mirrored down below, if you had this doubled, this is the infernal realms. This is the, the opponent. This is the darkness. This is the opposite. So a person is either in this world or in the resurrection, which I believe is here because this is where the Christ center is. And this is also where the human heart is, right? So this is the psychic realm here where dreams are, where like um, astrology, like those energies are. But then like above this is where we start getting closer to God, right closer to the Christ center here. And anything above this is like ascended master, like you don't have your own personality more, anymore, you're absorbed it back into God. Okay. So a person is either in this world or in the resurrection or in the middle place. Now, as long as we are human beings, the only point of us being human beings is to come to earth and to go through challenges 
in order to awaken and expand and heal and correct our souls. And so this happens over many lifetimes. And the only real reason for us to incarnate, period, is to do this, is to go through this work. And so as long as there is soul progression and like there is soul evolution to do, we have a ticket to be reborn and come to this earth again and again. If we complete our tikkun healing, which means we have completely elevated our soul and there's no more work to do and we've completely healed and corrected our ego and transformed and alchemized all of our negativity, then that means that we are up at the Christ level of consciousness. And if we go beyond the Christ level of consciousness, then we basically are shedding the last bit of our own like personal personality and we're being reabsorbed into God. And there was one um, person who was reabsorbed into God, it was Enoch. And there were a couple of other um, prophets who ascended and they didn't die. And those were people whose souls were so elevated that they just left the flesh and were able to ascend. So a person is either in, the, uh, in this world or in the resurrection. So when we're here in the material world, we are here doing that work of the resurrection here in the flesh. You see, when we are um, not embodied and when we're in a soul, but we don't have flesh, we're kind of stuck at the consciousness and the soul level that we're at. The only way to progress from where you are once you're out of body is to be on earth. And so spirits and souls give anything to be able to incarnate into the flesh world, into the material world because they can't progress from whatever fate that they are in out of body until they come into body and they can earn their way into an elevated state of consciousness. Because once we get out of body, it's all consciousness. So if you are miserable here on earth and you are impatient and you're afraid and you're scarce and you don't believe in anything and you can't control your emotions, then you're going to be a hungry ghost when you die, when you leave your flesh suit. And that's what you're going to be left with. You don't have anybody else to work your shit out with. You don't have anybody else to help you transmute your darkness into light, which is basically your credit, your debt that you have when you come to this earth. We have assignments. We have work to do while we're here. So what we do while we're here is we try to transmute our darkness into light and we try to transcend, you know, the, the seven demons that we all carry, those uh, lower parts of ourselves where the ego, you know, leaves space for the opponent to get in and torment us and, and, and keep us held back and keep us bound. We can actually transcend those and elevate those and, and hold dominion and sovereignty over those and they become powers. And so, you know, as we are here, we are in the living, like this is the realm of the dead. This all, this flesh suit has an expiration date, right? Once we are reborn and we ascend, we are in the land of the living because we are eternal at that point. We don't have a flesh suit. But our consciousness has to be at that elevated level. Otherwise, we're going to be back in the middle place, right? If you come to this earth and you don't do any work or worse, you get worse off while you're here and you're, you're in a horrible, like miserable state and you become like an evil, wicked person, then, you know, it's like after you start losing the chance to come back and reincarnate again and again and again. I don't know if you lose that chance, but like at some point it's like you might be in like a limbo where you're just kind of stuck and you don't know where you are. And it's like when you're wandering the astral realms, it is what it is. Like when you're here, it's all an illusion. You're in the simulation. It's like a game. And the challenge that challenges that you see are there for a purpose. 
and it's a simulation and it's there for to test you so that you can elevate the soul so that when you're not safe in the flesh suit and you're exposed to the cosmos you know that you've elevated and you have that surrounding light of protection and that you're hopefully going you know somewhere good but if you leave this like once you're like even so like even the good things in this life if they're too good you know and you're not giving a challenge then that's not really good because it's not really serving you in any way it's just pacifying you're just fattening up your flesh cow right fattening up your ego it's the challenges in this life that are actually precious that are actually valuable that we that are actually good it's the things that we would deem oh this is bad this is evil why is this happening to me it's those exact challenges that cause us to have to face darkness and become resilient whole and like stretch our faith in the creator in those moments where we transcend our smallness like those are the big moments those are the treasured moments where those elevate our soul and they prepare us for that transition to where we're not confused we're not lost and we can transcend and we can navigate the space right but if you don't build these consciousness skills when you're in the flesh suit then once you're released from it it's like you don't know how to navigate the astral realms right and so once you get there into the astral realms it says okay so a person is either in this world or in the resurrection or in the middle place. May I not be found there. In this world, there is good and evil. Like in this world, there's good and evil, but the good of this world is not really good. You know, it's like, it's good, but it's not really doing you any service. It's not really any, of any value really, except for just enjoyment. And I mean, that's not bad, but like it's, you know, it doesn't strengthen you. It doesn't progress you. It doesn't give you anything in the long run. It's, it's short-term gratification. And, and instead of long-term uh, value. Um, and the evil of the world is not really evil. Um, you know, it's just, it, it all appear. you know, this is all a simulation, right? And what's scary, it's like half the time the threats aren't even real, you know? Um, once we relax and, and we're like, this is probably only a test. You know, and I mean, not to say that there aren't very dark and tragic things that are very real, um, but, you know, uh, for the most part, what we deem is like, oh, this challenge is just awful. And what we like, you know, turn our nose up at, that's usually the thing that's like giving us uh, the strength and the, and the awareness and the consciousness that's going to give us the ability to rise above and transcend and go into those divine realms when we leave this flesh and not get stuck in confusion. And I mean, some people don't even know they're dead. Um, and remind me to cover this one last thing before we, we finish. Okay, so, but the good of the world is not really good, and the evil of the world is not really evil. After this world, there is evil that is really evil. So basically what that means is while we're in this world, what we're seeing presented, it's not the end-all be-all. It can only have so much of an effect on us. And it's really only an illusion. Like it's, it feels real, but like this is also temporary in the grand scheme. And so basically it's like as if we were putting on virtual reality glasses. And what we're seeing feels real and it seems real and we're feeling stimulated by it, um, but it's all an illusion. And when we take the goggles off, it's like, oh, that was, that was only a projection. Well, the same is true for the flesh suit. When we take the flesh suit off, it's all only a projection. However, once we take the flesh suit off and we're in the spiritual realm, that evil is very much very real. And you are exposed to it completely. Uh, you don't have that protection of the surrounding light. This, you know, if your soul is totally exposed. Um... So after this world, there is evil that is really evil. Um, this is called the middle. The middle is death. 
because the middle is death. It's like you're out of body, um, but you're not in sovereignty of your consciousness. And so you can't continue to be regenerated and keep creating and, and becoming. It's like you are then at the mercy, you know, um, and you are our prey, essentially. And you are death. And it's like you can't resurrect, you know, resurrecting is rising from the dead. And so it's like when we are in this body and we overcome the body consciousness and we transcend the ego and we like embody a higher consciousness that gives us sovereignty over the flesh that we can say no to our yearn for instant gratification and choose a higher uh, level of consciousness, that is resurrection. That is being reborn. That is elevating the soul within the body. So it's like you're elevating your stature and your status and your vibration. And that's eternal. That that carries on with you. Um, and that keeps perpetuating more and more life. And once you're elevated, you can't like slide back and like unelevate. So the the resurrection is like the being reborn and being, you know, dying and, and resurrecting, coming back to life. It's like being in this flesh when you have that spiritual awakening and you change who you were and you and you become more than you were and you become have more affinity with the light of the creator and you take on that Christ consciousness, the path of Christ consciousness. It's like you are you more than you're more than you once were and you're resurrected and you've and you've risen from the dead you've defeated death because then you see through the illusion that like this life is is so temporary like all the things that we see in front of us it seems so real but it's not like the light body the consciousness that remains that's real and so that's everlasting and so knowing that gives you absolute freedom in this life because you're not completely consumed by the fear of annihilation and you're actually free. Um, okay, so, um, and the middle is death. As long as we are in this world, we should acquire resurrection. Like what we just said, it's like this is the realm where we do that, where we, where we get to do the work, where we get to think and feel and experience and interact with one another and have a place where we can elevate ourselves. Without this flesh, without this ticket into the, the physical world, we don't have that, we can't do it. As long as we are in this world, we should acquire resurrection so that when we take off the flesh, we may be found in rest and not wander in the middle. So the um, footnote there, oh, so when we die, so when we take off the flesh, so it's like when we die, we may not be, we, we may be found in rest and not wander in the middle. And so, yeah, that, that's just like, we prepare ourselves to take off the flesh and, and be, and die and navigate that world. We're at peace. We're in serenity. We've elevated, we've transcended, but also we have enough of, uh, of, uh, an awakened consciousness where it's like we can, we have, we hold memory from when we were alive and we can navigate the afterlife. Um, okay. So, so we may be found in rest and not wander in the middle for many go astray on the way. So in, in Kabbalah, we learn that every single person, when we die, we can experience up to a year of what people know as hell. And it's depending on how much work you do in this life, like what this verse is pretty much talking about, you may have a very easy experience of that and it may be very brief it may be just like a split second of like what feels like a nice hot shower um just a cleansing like everything passes through you and if you are completely lost and have no sense of spiritual awareness or grounding 
and you're, you know, lost in misery and despair and fear and maybe addiction or like, you know, people who are suicidal and they're very emotionally upset when they, when they commit suicide, it's like those people might be very disoriented when they die and they might, it might take them a year of like difficult periods of hell. So in, um, in Judaism, the family and the loved ones, you pray for the people who have passed on and your work, your own like spiritual transformation helps elevate your loved ones after they have passed. And it helps them transition through that, that realm. And, you know, it's on a spectrum for everyone and how they experience it. Um, but that is something to think of, you know. Uh, this world, the resurrection and the middle. A person is either in this world or in the resurrection or in the middle place. May I not be found there. In this world, there is good and evil, but the good um, in this world is not really good, and the evil of this world is not really evil. After this world, there is evil that is really evil. This is called the middle. The middle is death. As long as we are in this world, we shall acquire, oh, as long as we are in this world, we shall acquire a resurrection. So that when we take off the flesh, we may be found in rest and not wander in the middle. For many go astray on the way. All right, you all. I am sleepy times. That was the world, the resurrection, and the middle. I will see y'all tomorrow for our weekly energy oracle forecast. Y'all be good. Not too good. Ciao.